All right, so we've got a mountain of voter guides and info here, all about the California election coming up. Propositions, local measures, the whole nine yards. It can be a lot to wade through, especially this year. Definitely. Yeah. So we're going to focus this deep dive on those state propositions and really break down what's at stake. You know, help our listeners make sense of it all. Yeah, good idea. This ballot's pretty packed. And a lot of these propositions, well, they touch on some pretty hot button issues. Spending, housing, criminal justice reform. Stuff that affects, like, everyone in California. Absolutely. Okay, before we continue, a quick reminder for our listeners. Remember to subscribe to stay informed. Now let's dive in. First up, Proposition 2. The Education Finance Bond. They're asking for, like... $10 billion. That's a big number. It's for school facilities, basically. Upgrading and building new ones. Across the board, right? Not just like one type right. of school. Yeah, pretty much. K-12, public schools, charter schools, community colleges, even career technical education programs. The idea is to modernize everything, make sure schools are safe, and, uh, you know, can attract good teachers. Okay, so that's the four argument. <laughs> but $10 billion dollars? That's a massive amount of money to borrow. Right, and that's where the against argument comes in. Taxpayers, they're going to be the ones paying back that debt, plus all the interest. So higher property taxes. Potentially, yeah. And the other concern is that money might get taken away from other important services, you know, to pay for this. It's that classic debate, investing in education versus being responsible with how we spend money. Definitely something to weigh carefully. Uh -huh. All right, let's move on. Proposition 3 deals with marriage equality. This one's about changing the California Constitution to make it super clear that everyone has the right to marry, no matter their sex or race. And so, like, adding those protections directly into the state constitution? Exactly. Same-sex marriage is already legal in California and nationwide because of the Supreme Court, but this would make it even more solid within the state itself. Makes sense. But I see there's an argument against this, too. What are their concerns? Well, it's not so much about being against same-sex marriage itself. It's more about, like, unintended consequences. They worry that changing the wording in the Constitution, you know, removing the part that specifically says marriage is between a man and a woman, they worry that could open the door to things like polygamy or child marriage. Interesting. But supporters say those things are already illegal, you know, with other laws, and that this amendment is just about making sure all couples have equal rights. Yeah, it definitely makes you think about, like, where do you draw the line? Individual rights versus, you know, what's considered acceptable by society. Hmm, tough one. Okay, on to Proposition 4. This is the Climate Impacts Bond, another one with a big price tag. Ten billion, yep. This one's for water projects, wildfire prevention, dealing with climate change, like big picture stuff. Exactly. They're talking about improving water infrastructure, making our forests more resilient to fires, investing in clean energy. The argument for it is basically we have to do something and we have to do it now, you know, with droughts and wildfires getting worse. So the urgency of climate change is a key part of their argument. Definitely. But again, the cost is the big issue for the opposition. They say bonding is the most expensive way to pay for this stuff. Like, we'll be paying interest on that debt forever. So their argument is, like, find the money in the regular budget, even if it means cutting back on other things. Yeah, that's their point. They say it's more responsible, fiscally. Hmm. Makes you think about, you know, how we as a state decide what to spend money on. What are our priorities? All right, next up, Proposition 5. This one's about affordable housing, which, as we all know, is a huge issue in California. It's a big one. This proposition wants to make it easier for local governments to raise money for affordable housing projects and infrastructure projects, too. Right now, they need a two-thirds majority vote to pass bonds for that stuff. Prop 5 would lower it to 55%. So giving more power to local communities to address their own housing needs. That's the idea. But of course, there are concerns about the downsides. Opponents say, you know, lowering that vote threshold could lead to higher property taxes. And put more strain on local budgets. Right. Plus, they worry about, like, loopholes. You know, could people misuse the funds? So it's a question of local control versus, you know, potential risks. Interesting. All right, this next one is really thought-provoking. Proposition 6 is about slavery. Yeah, not something you typically see on a modern ballot. It's a reminder that, you know, even in the 21st century, we're still dealing with the legacy of slavery. Exactly. So 
this proposition, what it wants to do is get rid of this exception in the California Constitution that says involuntary servitude is okay if it's used as punishment for a crime. Wait, you mean like making prisoners work? That's still allowed? Well, it's this weird little provision that most people don't know of it, and it's definitely raised some ethical questions. For sure. And what's really interesting is that there's no organized opposition to this proposition. Seems like everyone agrees it's time to get rid of this exception. Huh, yeah. It makes you wonder why it's been in the Constitution for so long, right? Like, how have our values changed over time? Okay, let's talk about Proposition 32. This one's about the minimum wage. Always a hot topic. Always. This proposition wants to raise California's minimum wage to $18 an hour. Gradually, of course, not all at once. Okay, so what's the reasoning behind that? Supporters say it's about basic fairness. You know, making sure people can actually afford to live in California, especially with the cost of living so high. Especially for essential workers, people in those lower paying jobs. Right, exactly. They talk about single moms, families struggling to get by, but uh, businesses are not thrilled about this, to say the least. Yeah, I can imagine. What are their concerns? They say raising the minimum wage that much, that fast, it'll lead to job losses. Businesses will have to cut costs somehow. Exactly. And they'll raise prices, so everyone ends up paying more. So it's that classic push and pull. Protecting workers versus, you know, keeping the economy strong. Exactly. And of course, there's always the question of, like, is the government meddling too much in the free market? All right, let's move on to Proposition 33. This one's all about rent control a perennial hot topic in California. Especially here in San Francisco. Yeah, definitely. So this proposition is basically about giving more power back to local governments. Right now, there's this state law that limits how much cities and counties can control rents. Prop 33 wants to get rid of that law. So supporters see this as a way to make rents more affordable, address the housing crisis. Exactly. They say rent control is necessary to protect tenants, you know, prevent people from getting priced out of their homes. But opponents, mainly landlords and real estate groups, they say this would actually make the housing shortage worse. How so? They argue that if you make it harder for landlords to make money, they won't build new housing, and that'll just drive up prices even more. They also say it could lower property values, you know, hurt cities in the long run. So it, again, it comes down to, like, how much should the government intervene in the market? And how do you balance the needs of renters and property owners? It's a tough one. Okay, let's talk about Proposition 34. This one's a bit more specific. It deals with healthcare spending, but it targets certain providers. Yeah, it's a little bit complicated. So there's this federal program called the 340B program. It basically requires drug manufacturers to offer discounts to healthcare providers that serve low income and uninsured patients. Okay, makes sense. So this proposition, it wants to put new rules on how certain providers, specifically the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, can spend the money they save through this program. So what's the issue? Are they not spending it correctly? Well, supporters of Prop 34 say the AIDS Healthcare Foundation isn't using enough of that money for direct patient care. They claim it's going towards other things, like lobbying administrative costs. Hmm. So not really helping the patients it's supposed to be helping. That's the argument. They say this proposition would make things more transparent, you know, make sure the money is actually going to the people who need it. But I'm guessing the AIDS Healthcare Foundation has something to say about this. Oh yeah, they're definitely pushing back. They're calling this a political attack, basically. They say they are using the money correctly and that this is just an attempt to silence them because they're vocal advocates for, you know, HIV AIDS issues, affordable housing, things like that. Wow, so there's a whole other layer to this. It makes you think about, like, are ballot measures sometimes used for political agendas? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, next up is Proposition 35. This one's about a health care tax. This one's actually pretty straightforward. There's a tax on managed health care plans that's set to expire in a few years. Prop 35 wants to make that tax permanent. Okay, and what does that tax money pay for? Medical. Which is? California's Medicaid program. Basically, health care for low-income Californians. So this proposition is about making sure that funding is stable long-term. Exactly. And, you know, Medi-Cal is a big deal. Millions of Californians rely on it. Kids, seniors, people with disabilities. Supporters say this tax is crucial to keeping the program running and making sure everyone has access to health care. Is there any opposition to this? It seems like a pretty worthy cause. That's the thing, there's no official argument against it in the voter guide. Huh. So no organized opposition. Yeah. Interesting. Makes you wonder why. 
Maybe it's just widely supported. Could be. Or maybe there's something else going on behind the scenes. It's worth thinking about. All right, one more state proposition before we move on to the local measures. Proposition 36. This one deals with crime penalties. Always a sensitive topic. Definitely. So this proposition wants to increase penalties for certain drug and theft offenses, particularly fentanyl trafficking and those... Uh, what do they call them? Smash and grabs. Yeah, I've heard about those. So the argument for this is basically we need to get tough on crime, you know, make our communities safer, hold repeat offenders accountable. They point to the fentanyl crisis, how devastating it's been, and the rise in organized retail theft. So their focus is on punishment, deterrence. Right. But uh, as you can imagine, there's strong opposition to this. They say increasing penalties is just going to lead to more people in prison, especially people of color. That's a step backwards, basically. <laughs> exactly. And they argue that it doesn't address the real reasons why people commit crimes in the first place, like poverty, addiction, lack of opportunities. They say we need to focus on rehabilitation, not just punishment. So it really comes down to your philosophy on crime and the justice system. It does. Do you believe in being tough on crime, or do you think we need to focus on rehabilitation and addressing the root causes? Big questions, no easy answers. Definitely something for voters to really consider. All right, now that we've tackled those statewide propositions, let's shift gears and zoom in on what's happening right here in San Francisco. Sounds good. You ready for a whole new set of complex issues? Bring it on. So yeah, we've got the statewide stuff out of the way. Now we can look at what's happening right here in San Francisco. A bunch of local measures on the ballot, schools, transportation, public safety, all sorts of things. It's easy to forget about those local measures, you know, with all the big state and national stuff going on. But they really do matter. Like, they have a direct impact on our lives. Oh, absolutely. And this year, the San Francisco measures, they really reflect what people are worried about. You know, education funding, the housing crisis, public safety, even the future of our parks and streets. We've got a lot to cover, so maybe we could pick out a few that are particularly interesting or maybe controversial. Sure. One that caught my eye was Measure A. It's the Schools Improvement and Safety Bond. They're asking for over a billion dollars. Wow. What's that for? To upgrade school facilities, mostly. Make them safer in case of an earthquake, you know, and get more technology into the classrooms. It kind of ties in with what we were talking about earlier with Proposition 2, right? The need for more investment in education. Exactly. It's like the statewide issue playing out at the local level. And the arguments are similar, too. Supporters of Measure A, they say our schools are falling apart, literally. They need repairs, they need upgrades, and kids deserve to learn in a safe, modern environment. But then, of course, there's the cost. Yeah, the cost always comes up. Always. People who oppose Measure A, they say San Francisco already has really high property taxes. And this bond, it's just going to add to that burden. Plus, they say there's no guarantee that spending more money will actually improve education. Tough choices. OK, what else is on the list? Another one that's sure to be a hot topic is Measure G, the Affordable Housing Fund. This is about, like, building more affordable housing in San Francisco. Yeah, that's the idea. It would create this special fund specifically for developing and preserving affordable housing. Which we desperately need. No kidding. It's a direct response to the housing crisis, you know? People are getting priced out of the city left and right. Essential workers can't even afford to live here anymore. Supporters of this measure, they say it's absolutely essential if we want San Francisco to remain diverse, inclusive, a place where everyone can afford to live, no matter their income. But I'm guessing there are concerns about how to pay for all this. Oh, yeah. Opponents are worried about, you know, property taxes going up even more. They say homeowners and businesses are already struggling. And they also argue that Measure G, it doesn't really address the root causes of the housing crisis, like zoning laws, the slow pace of new construction. Right. It's like, is this just a Band-Aid solution? That's their argument. <laughs> OK, let's talk about something a little different. Measure K. This one's all about the Great Highway. Ah, yes, the Great Highway, always a source of debate. You know it. So for those who don't know, the Great Highway is that scenic road that runs along the ocean on the west side of the city. Beautiful views. Right. Anyway, during the pandemic, they closed a section of it to cars, turned it into like a park, basically. People could walk, bike, enjoy the views. I remember that. It seemed like a lot of people really liked it. They did. So Measure K, it wants to make that permanent, ban cars from that section of the Great Highway forever, and create a park and recreation area. Ooh, like a, a car-free zone. 
Exactly. People who support it, they say it'll make the area safer, less pollution, you know, and it'll be a great public space for everyone to enjoy. But I'm guessing some people aren't happy about that. Oh, yeah. People who rely on the Great Highway to get around, they're not thrilled. They say closing it to cars is just going to create more traffic on other streets, make it harder for people to get to work, you know, especially folks who live on the west side. And probably some businesses aren't happy either. Right. The ones that depend on car traffic. So it's that classic San Francisco thing, right? Trying to balance everyone's needs and priorities. Not easy. All right, one more measure I want to talk about. This one's sure to be controversial. Measure O, the San Francisco Reproductive Freedom Act. This is about abortion rights. Right. Yep. It would basically make it city policy to support reproductive health care, including abortion. And it would stop the city from using any resources to like interfere with people seeking or providing reproductive health care. So it's a way to protect abortion rights at the local level, you know, with everything that's happening at the state and national level. Exactly. Supporters of Measure O, they say it's more important now than ever to make sure everyone has access to safe, legal abortion care. But of course, there are people who are strongly opposed to this. Yeah, I can imagine. They say it's not the city's place to take a stand on such a divisive issue, you know. And they also worry about, like, taxpayer money being used to fund abortion. So again, it reflects the bigger national debate, right? Absolutely. All right, so we've looked at some of the big local measures on the ballot. Education, housing, transportation, reproductive rights. These are all such important issues, and they really show how much power local government has to affect our lives. No doubt. And it's up to us, the voters, to decide what kind of city we want San Francisco to be. Well, we've certainly covered a lot of ground today haven't we? We have. Yeah. From those statewide propositions to the San Francisco measures, a lot to think about. Yeah. Education funding, marriage equality, climate change, housing, even the Great Highway. Yeah. It's a lot to process, that's for sure. But it shows you how important it is to really, you know, be an informed voter, especially in this election. There's so much at stake. Absolutely. Right. It can be overwhelming, all this information. But hopefully this deep dive has been helpful, you know, giving our listeners a better understanding of what's on their ballot. Yeah, I hope so. But it's just a starting point, really. We've given an overview, but it's up to each voter to do their own research, you know, dig deeper into the issues that matter most to them, form their own opinions. Exactly. And there are tons of resources out there to help people do that. Nonpartisan organizations, fact checks. You can read arguments from both sides online, in newspapers. Don't be afraid to talk to people, too, you know friends, family, colleagues, sometimes just talking about these issues can help you figure out where you stand. Yeah, good point. At the end of the day, it's your vote, your voice, your chance to shape the future of California and your community. Right. And that's what democracy is all about, isn't it? Participating, engaging in these debates, making your voice heard. So as we wrap up here, what's one key takeaway you'd leave our listener with as they head to the polls, I mean? Hmm, I guess I'd say... Remember that every vote matters. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Your vote has power. So take the time to understand the issues, consider the different perspectives, and then cast your vote with confidence. Well said. It's been great diving into all this with you. Likewise. Always a pleasure to talk about these things. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the California ballot. We hope you found it helpful as you get ready to vote. And to our listener, thank you for taking the time to engage with these important issues.